Well, before we get into God's Word, uh, can we blank, put a blank on this, uh, on this script? I'd, li I'd like to make an announcement for our anniversary celebration. We're going to celebrate our 55th anniversary. But we're going to do something different. Uh, we're going to do a, a 40 day discipleship campaign and we are working on the theme hashtag reality now for the education of those who are older than 35 years old hashtag is not number hashtag is not uh, is not sharp hashtag is hashtag that's how you call it and it simply means shared reality Tama ba ho, young people? Shared something that, you know, that's shared together. So, we share the reality of our experience of God. And in that 40-day campaign, as a church, we would like to go back uh, to that um, experience of go back to the teachings of the Bible about how to know God's will. How to know when God is speaking to us. How to see to it that our decisions are influenced by the Word of God, the work of God in our lives. And that's what it means to be uh, totally surrendered to God. So we will work through this workbook by Henry and Richard Blackaby. And this is where each of one can, each of us can participate. Our 40-day campaign will start on June 15. And if you are a member of a subgroup or a COC, you could decide as a COC or a subgroup. You know, let's go through this campaign. Suspend muna natin yung ating lesson. Let's, let's do this lesson together. You know why? Because this, uh, the themes of this book will also be the theme in our pulpit, the preaching in our pulpit. And at the same time, this will be uh, your discussion guide for your COC of course with matching videos and at the same time uh, your daily devotions will also be keep in so what you hear in the pulpit will be substantiated in your daily quiet time and at the same time uh, this will be the point of discussion for your small group so it will be quite an intensive um, discipleship campaign in our church as we uh, look towards celebrating our 55th anniversary. And then of course, it will culminate with a musical that the choir is preparing with the same title, Reality. So, in your COCs, talk about this, that you're, if you're going to adopt uh, this material and participate in this uh, campaign. But I'm sure there will be people who will ask, Pastor, I'm not in a COC. Well, it is important for you to be in a small group setting. So we try to make solutions for that. After this service, when you go out, there will be booths there for the young adults, for the youth, for the women, for the men. And I want you to sign in with the sign-up sheets that are out there, telling them that, you know, I want to be in a small group. I want to be part of this company. This is just a 40-day campaign, you know, it's just a start. I think on 40 days muna. Then later on, you could decide on if you could continue on with the group. Okay? So this will be after the service. Go down. There will be booths. Sign up booths there. And uh, sign up for the reality 40-day campaign. Okay? And then you may ask, hey, Pastor, talagang Sunday lang ako, morning pwede. So, ang solution natin dyan, but it's not really a a uh, strong solution, even our adult Sunday school will be focusing on that. However, the capacity of our rooms is only up to 15. So, we cannot accommodate 30 or 35. Kaya, we encourage you to go to the small groups. But of course, you know, if we need the Kaya, yung Sunday school natin could accommodate. Okay, so much for that. Let us get our Bibles. Turn with me to Acts chapter 16, um, verse 1 and following, and then we are going to read another passage from uh, 1 Timothy.
First Timothy chapter 6. Okay, let us all stand up in reverence to the reading of God's Word. Acts 16, verse 1. He came to Derbe and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was a Jewess and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The brothers at Lystra in Iconium spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew his father was a Greek. Now let's turn a few pages to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But you, man of God, Timothy, flee from all these and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to, to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in His own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, and who lives in an approachable life, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be the honor and might forever. Let us pray. Father, we pray that you will inspire us, speak to us today as we look into your word and look into the life of this man of God named Timothy. And challenge our hearts, O oh Lord, to really lead our lives to be men and women of God. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue on our series on this title, People Strategically Engaged. And we just decided to use this bulletin design for today's so to prepare us and to promote your participation with the reality campaign. But we've been looking at the book of Acts since uh, January and it's a very, very interesting journey for me. It's a, pers a very interesting and enriching personal journey studying uh, in depth the book of Acts. And then in the book of Acts, there were major players, major characters uh, like Peter, Paul, of course, the Holy Spirit, and and at the same time, there are, there are characters there playing a minor role, and we are looking at some of those uh, personalities. Even though they had a minor role, their stories were given very very short, uh, but they are still being used by God. They are people strategically engaged. Last week, we looked at the life of this couple, Aquila and Priscilla. They were businessmen and their business was about tent making, manufacturing and selling tents to people at that time. And we talked about their encounter with the Apostle Paul and their 18 months together, how they were discipled by the Apostle Paul, how Paul became their employee and as while working together as employee and employer, Paul, Priscilla, and Aquila also turned their relationship to be a discipler, disciple maker and a disciple. Paul was their teacher and Aquila and Priscilla was their, uh, was his disciples. And in those 18 months, they matured and we saw that they didn't leave their business, they didn't uh, they did turn away from their tent making profession. They moved ahead with what God has given them as a livelihood. And they still pursued of their dream to live in the great city of Rome. <coughs> and yet in those times, we could see how God has been moving in their lives and how God has used them mightily. 
In other words, they were never full-time ministers, but Priscilla and Aquila lived as full-time Christians. <coughs> Today, we are going to look at another character, and his name is Timothy. People who are strategically engaged, God cannot only doesn't only use tent makers or business professional business or professionals, but he also use uses full-time ministers. And we're going to take a look at the life of this person, Timothy, the profile of a full-time minister. Where did Timothy come from? It says in Acts 16, verse 1, Paul came to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, and Paul wanted to take him along on the journey. So, Lystra is one of the cities that the Apostle Paul visited on his first missionary journey. And I'd like you to take note, and I think I mentioned it uh, some weeks ago, that Lystra is practically enriched when it comes with the Word of God. There were no synagogues around, there were no uh, prayer groups of Jews around gathering to pray. There's practically nothing. It's a pagan society, and that's very significant. This disciple, or this character, Timothy, uh, grew up in that city. And what kind of work did the Apostle Paul gave Timothy uh, for his job as a full-time minister, as a member of his apostolic team? The first kind of job that Timothy, we find from scriptures, is that he became the co-author of some epistles, particularly uh, First and Second Thessalonians. You could read in First Thessalonians 1 verse 1 and also the same words in Second Thessalonians 1 verse 1. Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, there are three authors in the epistle to the Thessalonians. And Timothy was one of them. And then another thing that the Apostle Paul, another job that the Apostle Paul gave to Timothy was to become a leadership and a ministry trainer. So this is the strategy of the Apostle Paul. He would come into a city, he would declare the gospel as much as he could, he would stir up controversy, he would stir up their minds and their hearts to respond to the gospel, and then when controversy happens, you know, he will be booted out of the city, but his assistants would be working quietly with him. They will be left behind and they will continue on the work. So what do they do? They begin to produce leaders for the churches, for the groups of believers that respond to the gospel. Just like this we could see in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. It says there, And the things you heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will, be, who will also be qualified to teach others. So what Paul is instructing Timothy, you know, the things that you heard from me, you train other men who rely on other people who can do the same ministry so they can continue on with the ministry. And he also says, devote yourself to the public reading of scriptures, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift which was given you. You know what? Listen to this. Here we could immediately see what pastors and full-time ministers are all about. Pastors and full-time professional ministers are there, the clergy are there in order to train and equip the body of believers. That is really the main task, to equip the body of believers. You know, sometimes when I go around preaching among civil churches, I would give strong statements such as this. Church, if you don't find your pastor truly equipping you in the Word of God to do the ministry, fire him. Why he's so overpaid? You know, what deception Satan has been putting into our churches today is this. Pastor, we pay you to do ministry. You know what? Even if you don't pay me, 
I will continue to do ministry. Because ministry is not connected with my pastoral identity. Ministry is connected with me being a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ. That is the design of the church. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 4, 11, 13, he said, he gave the church apostles, uh, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, to equip the church so that the church could mature and that the church could do works of ministry. Who does the ministry? Is it the pastor? Yes, he does it, along with all the members of the church. I remember in our bulletin here at CCBC, there was one time, I think it was in the time of Pastor John Redman, where he he asked the ones who are preparing the bulletin, you put their pastors, Reverend Fred Magbana, Reverend John Redman, and ministers, all the members, just to inject to us that the people who does ministry are the members of CCBC, are the disciples, the followers of Jesus Christ. And that the full-time minister, the professional one, he ought to be engaged in equipping, training, teaching them the Word of God that they may use it for their maturity and for ministry as well. So, that's the work of Timothy. By the way, let me give you a little background. When Timothy was given this job, he was already 30 years old, quite a young man in, old, in, in the olden days. And at the same time, listen, he was still a one-year-old Christian. One-month-old Christian. Alam niyo, ang pumunta si Paul doon sa Lystra, when he began evangelizing Lystra, Timothy was one of the converts. He stayed there for a few months and then left and went back again to Antioch and then reported back to Jerusalem. When the Jerusalem Council met and then they made this decision, you know, uh, that the Gentiles are part of the family of God, immediately Paul went back to Lystra to recruit Timothy, be part of my team. And that's just barely one year or two years. So a person who has been a disciple for that long, but later on we will see how, how did that happen. It's because of what the Apostle Paul did. So he was also a preacher and a teacher of the Word of God. Another thing is that Timothy was a practical apologist. Pastor, what do you mean by practical apologist? Well, in, in Christian circles, when you hear the, the word apology, it could mean two things. One is saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> and the other means defending the faith. So when I'm talking about being practical apologies here, I'm not talking about Timothy saying, oh, sorry, sorry, maingay yung aming drum set. Parang gano'n, hindi po yun. We're talking about defending the faith and protecting the church from false teaching. But look at the instructions of the Apostle Paul to this young man on how he ought to do it. He says, as I urged you, command certain men not to teach false doctrines any longer, nor divert, devote themselves to meats and endless genealogies. You know, I try to imagine myself as a 30-year-old young man, young in faith, and I go to these groups, and then I see some teachers, COC leaders, Sunday school teachers, doing wrong teachings. They may be older than me, and I will approach them, you know, stop teaching that. That's not what the Apostle Paul teaches as truth. Stop teaching that. And then if they say, oh, what, what, what can you do, young man? I mean, you know, I've been teaching this for a long time. Then Timothy ought to fire them. Then umalis na kayo. Don't come into this house church anymore. Bring your teaching to others, not to this house church, or not to this group, or something like that. To me, wow, that's, that's a tough job. That's why the Apostle Paul has to write to him in, in, in 2 Timothy 4, 13. You know, do not let, let others look down on you because you are young. He keeps on encouraging Timothy. You know, stand in the truth, stand in the word. Wow, tough job. Another uh, 
task of, of Timothy that's given to him by Paul is to be a disciple maker and a model for Christian life. What do you mean, pastor? Uh, and, and, and of course, a personal assistant to the Apostle Paul. You know, when Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, he wrote these words, I am sending you Timothy, my son, referring that he's my disciple. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere and in every church. You see how Paul delegates to Timothy to continue teaching the churches about how it is to be a Christian, how to live the Christian life, how to be a follower of Christ, how to live in the reality that the kingdom of God has come, how to live in the reality that our sins are now forgiven in Christ Jesus as a result of His death and resurrection on the cross and all of the other things. But take note, listen, how Paul mentions this. He will remind you not of my theology, not of my teachings. He will remind you of my way of life. Listen, I think this is the secret. Why Timothy, in a span of a short period, became a, a, a full-time Christian worker that the great apostle Paul could rely on? Paul did not just transfer to him his lectures on theology, his lectures on justification by faith, his lectures on sanctification, the work of the Holy Spirit. No! Timothy lived with him and heard and saw it by his very own eyes and interacting with the Apostle Paul. How these truths is lived out in practical day-to-day -day living. You know what this is called? It's called discipleship. Other brothers and sisters of the Lord here at CCBC, this is one area that we need to sharpen our capacity to do. We could open our lives in an act of hospitality, building friends, building connections with the people around us, and by them journeying with us, they could see the truth of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ by the practice of our lives. So here at CCBC, we want to be good not only in our preaching, but even in our practice of the word. And look at the statement of the Apostle Paul, you know. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere and in every church. So his practice is his preaching. His preaching is his practice. And this is how we ought to be. And this is how every man or woman of God ought to be. And this is how every leader in the church, elder, deacon, pastor, Bible teacher, ought to live. And we ought to emphasize this. What's happening in the world today is that, you know, let me work in. They may be good in declaring the word of God, teaching the word of God. To the point of very entertaining. They have their fun following. But if you look deeply into their lives, you know, it is never integrated. Their life will have another practice. I pray that the leadership in CCBC would not be that kind of people, but we strive to be just like the Apostle Paul and just like Timothy that our lives is also what is expressed in our lives. What we teach is what we also do day by day. It is consistent. 
There is integrity. That is what is needed in the world today. In the world where a people would lie and earn billions and billions of pesos. In a world where people would deceive and they get to be rich and get the privileges and the entitlements in this world. We need to live in the truth and to live in genuine integrity. So, this is Timothy. And how did he become, you know, what made him this? Again, where did his education come from? How was he able to accomplish this? As I have expressed to you earlier, he was personally taught and tutored by the Apostle Paul in the New Covenant in Christ by being a follower, a close follower of the Apostle Paul. Then second, he was tutored by her own mother, Eunice, and grandmother, Lois, in the Old Testament. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 goes this way. Let's read together. Sabi niya, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now lives in you. Another passage before I go on. As for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, and how from infancy you have known the scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation. Now, we could see here that even early on, Timothy was already exposed to the Word of God. Through whom? Through his mother and through he, her, his grandmother. Yeah, some pictures of blood in the page. So, what are some insights that we could draw here? You know, Timothy may have a mixed background growing up. He had a pagan father, a Greek father, a, 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 a father who does not have anything, does not know anything about God, and perhaps is never interested with, with Jesus Christ or with Yahweh or with the scriptures. And then Timothy also grew up in a pagan environment. As I mentioned to you, the city of Lystra, was practically unreached at that time. There was no synagogues gathering there at that time. So when the Apostle Paul came, it's, 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 it's really a city that is unreached. But how, was, how did he come to know God? How did he come to know, to have a deep knowledge of the Old Testament? It is by his Lola and Mama. Faithful and because of that, many men and women of God were raised up today. Para pangkon natin sila. You know, one of the big needs for the in, in, in our days today is the need for men and women of God. What do I mean, Pastor? When I say a man of God, when I say a woman of God, I'm talking about people who will love nothing wholeheartedly except God, who will hate nothing except sin, who is willing to take on the Word of God and let it be soaked in his life and it will be in his practice and his preaching. You know, it's something that the person who truly believe in the presence of God, that is what is needed today. As, as Jesus has said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. You know, we could easily bundle some things and recruit missionaries, and missionaries can go with different kinds of, of, of motives or different kinds of uh, what they call conditions in their spiritual life. But you know what? If they are not men and women of God, it will make it will never make a dent out in the harvest field. What the world needs out there, you know, as we are engaged in sending CCDC years, what the world needs out there are men and women of God. Whether it's whether it's tent makers. 
or professional ministers. Whatever it is, we need men and women of God. So when the Apostle Paul, through his journeys, he met this young man, a new convert, but he's a man of God, a man who knows the Word of God. His heart is prepared because he was educated by his Lola and his mama on the Old Testament. So perhaps when the Apostle Paul met him, there was already the anticipation in his heart, waiting for the Messiah to be declared and revealed. And when, when it was revealed to him, he responded and to his mind, everything fell into place. So to the Apostle Paul, it was not really difficult to teach him and to disciple him. And he just, he just had to wrestle with Timothy for the issues of his youth and the issues of his timidity. But essentially, everything falls into place. He can really be his outer ego, except for his personality. So mama and grandpa, grandma and grandpa, kasama rin po kayo doon. Kasi kanina umaga, sabi nung isang lola, Pastor, ito po si Timothy. Ako, ang Lois. Sabi naman ng nanay. Ako, ang Eunice. Ang sabi ng lolo, eh, sino naman ako? Sabi ba naman yung sa katabi ko yun, may bukang mesar ka. <laughs> Kasama rin po kayo, hindi ko lolo. Kasama rin po kayo. You know, I, I know, to some of us in our families, some of our little children in our family are, are growing up, you know, they were added into a family because of accident. You know, perhaps you have a child, a daughter, who gone wayward, and then umuwi yung buntis, kaya ngayon may baby kang kinakalagata. Or perhaps, you know, the family environment where you are in, you know, where you were not a believer back then when you were raising the family, so parang ang, ang hirap na iandu. Or perhaps you have a pagan husband. Or a pagan father. But let me tell you this. This is no excuse for you not to be a man of God or a woman of God. Timothy grew up with a pagan father in a pagan environment. But with the help of his daughter and nanai, he was able to grow up to be a man of God. But essentially, the final thing would be your decision. You know, listen to these young people. I have seen young people they grew up with godly parents. Their parents are men of God and women of God. They grew up with the word being instructed to them daily. But these young people still went astray. In the final analysis, it's not their background. It is their decision. Are you willing to make that decision? To really make a stand? Regardless of my background, I will love you, Lord. I will serve you, and I will live my life wholeheartedly for you. So, my friend, don't blame because I have an upset father. That's why I'm like this. I have an abusive mother. That's why I'm like this. Or I didn't come from a nurturing and a loving environment. That's why I'm this. You have a choice to be a man of God. So give yourself in the presence of God. So, next insight we see here is that Timothy, when he was raised, he was not raised to become a full time minister. When Lois and Eunice raised him, he was raised to be a full time Christian, to be a full time man. Lately, I've been meeting a number of pastors, you know, hearing their stories. I know Pastor Lay would also testify that he's a product of his grandma's or grandfather's prayer. You know, that one day there will be a pastor in your family and that's it. It's an answer, answer to his prayer. And I'm sure grandfather's uh, happy. And last week I met this. I was in a conference of Simba missionaries among Muslims. And I met this uh, mission, missionary lady, and you know her father has been praying to God. God, they're they're from Santa Cruz. You know I pray that you will give me a pastor 
if my children someday kaya alam, all my children are women but the Lord had a solution on that you know, it was, she was sent out as a missionary actually two of her his daughters so his, their, their father says to them that they are an answer to his prayers but you know what the challenge for us is this and let me give you a suggestion parents and daughter when you pray for your children and grandchildren go beyond merely praying that there will be pastors among your children and grandchildren Ask yourself, you know, towards the end, what's the purpose? Parang hindi masaya ka lang, iba-iba, variety, there's a doctor, a pastor, a lawyer, or well not, gano'n lang ba yun? The prayer should be, Lord, I pray that each of these young men, young ones, will become men and women of God someday. You know, that's how I and my wife pray for our five children. I've never prayed that one of them will become a pastor. I know how difficult it is to be a pastor. And I, I love them so much. I don't want them to suffer difficult things. <laughs> Whatever it is that the Lord will open up for them in terms of their careers. However it is, the Lord will guide them. My prayer for them is that they will become men and women of God. And the thing that will break my heart, listen to these my children and I'm dito, is that I see them turning away from that. And that is how we are to pray for this children. And now I've been talking to parents. And how about many of us who are here? You're not a grandma. You're not a mama. You're just one of the young ones. Find the person. You want to make that decision right now. Be a man. You know, I'm not asking you to be a pastor. I'm not asking you to be a missionary, although the world needs a lot of that today. But the thing that CCBC needs to send, the kind of people that CCBC needs to send, are men and women. Are you on the path to be one? Be a disciple. Find somebody to teach you. Find somebody who will lead you in the way of the Christian life. Let's come to the Lord. Father, thank you for the example in the life of Timothy. Continue to inspire us, Lord, by his testimony, even coming from a very dark background, and yet you have caused him to shine brightly as a light to the world. I pray that you will continue to move in our hearts. I pray that you will work in our hearts more. The those who are making decisions right now, making a resolve. Yes, I want to be the person that you wanted me to be. I want to be a woman of God. I want to be a man of God someday. And I also pray, Lord, for this important ministry of mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers and parents as well. Deepen, Lord, their cause them to use their influence, influence of godliness, to inject these values, Lord, to the younger generation. I pray that you bless us, Lord, as we continue to contemplate this. Amen.